So in today's video, we're going to talk about the big question that's on everybody's mind. Keep in mind that this is a theory video and nothing is 100% confirmed, but there has been a lot of strange news and rumors coming out recently. We have a whole lot of mysteries to discuss. Were these posts by DBD actually intended to be a Five Nights at Freddy's tease? What's the deal with that bug in the background of the new Dead by Daylight board game teaser? What did this data miner find out about the six year anniversary? What is this asset called Zoo doing in the DBD pack files? Are these tweets from Daco about Springtrap and DBD real? There are a lot of questions to solve in DBD because so many projects and secret collaborations are constantly happening behind the scenes. The theory that I have today goes to the heart of the six year anniversary speculations, addressing the one killer that's on everybody's mind and that's Springtrap. Is Springtrap the six year anniversary in DBD? This is the question we aim to answer today, or at least give our best educated guess. Quick reminder, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you wanna fill your recommended feed with DBD licensing news and speculation videos like this one. I post whenever there's new information. To start this conversation, we're gonna take a little bit of a closer look at this alleged tease from DBD Mobile. There's no denying the similarities between this newspaper article style and the newspapers that we see in FNAF. Some theorists even think that the top of this article is cropped because if they showed Help Wanted, that'd be too on the nose for this intended FNAF tease. The whole notion of the picture being taken at Father's Campbell's Chapel even adds to the tease. Since the idea of a children's circus is probably what closely matches the satanic Chuck E. Cheese style venue in FNAF. And on the other side of the coin, some people are really convinced that these FNAF theories are really a reach. Check out this post here from June 2021 with the same format of newspaper tweet. Even though the most recent tweet said help wanted, some people think that the whole thing was a coincidence. But these things don't happen by accident, right? The strangest thing I find about the tweet is that DBD Mobile last updated Crotus Prent Asylum on mobile in August 2021 and hasn't touched it since. In August 2021, we saw a visual update of the mobile teaser map. And might I point out that the version of the map in this alleged teaser is the version from PC. So why would they tweet this on the mobile account? There was not even a mention of Crotus Prent Asylum in the most recent DVD mobile patch notes. On Twitter, the King said, Polyester and I went looking for Freddy, but we didn't find him. I said, King, do you really think this is a FNAF tease or a stretch? King said, honestly, no clue. It could be an elaborate tease for us to say, oh shit, look, it was there the entire time in the future or just a coincidence that DVD mobile's social team ended up doing that. Either way, more good arguments for both ways, which always leads to nice speculation. Polyester said, I shine my flashlight in Maurice's third eye and everything. On Tuesday, March 15th, Behavior tweeted this out. Sound on, can you guess the sound? And here's the sound that played. Some people think that this sounds like security camera static, just like we see in here when toggling the security cameras in FNAF. To me, this sounds exactly like the main room in Larry's Memorial Institute, but why would they post this? And why did they tweet this on multiple different accounts? DBD Japan, listen carefully, do you guys know what this sounds like? DBD Germany, sound on, can you guess the sound? DBD Korea, turn on sound, what do you mean? They even posted this on Instagram too. Not only that, but they didn't post this soundbite to DBD Russia. Behavior just announced that DBD Russia is no longer receiving new content in DBD. Behavior may have made a choice to not tease anything on DBD Russia. So the fact they didn't post on this Twitter heavily suggests to me that these are teasers. Some people think that it could be teasing that Larry's Memorial Institute is going to be the next reworked map. But since when does Behavior tease reworked maps like this? It looks pretty identical to the trickster teasers we saw for the All Kill chapter. Are we entering an early teaser season right now in Dead by Daylight? If so, why would they do this? Are they just trolling us at this point? Indie Horror Support tagged me on Twitter in this theory post. This Twitter user said, A lot of the community, myself included, believe that the audio posted of Larry's was hiding a teaser of some sort. After putting it through some audio editing software, isolating various channels and adjusting the volumes of them, I believe I found what they were hiding. Here's what they found. <laughs> So do you think Behavior is secretly teasing Springtrap's jump scare sound here? Let me know in the comments below. We'll post more about this if these strange tweets continue to come. If this is actually a FNAF tease, this is something that Matthew Cote would have planned with Scott Cawthon, as Scott still owns the FNAF franchise. But wait, aren't some of these teases too on the nose for Scott? It's not quite as elaborate as the teases seen in FNAF. If they were to tease FNAF, they'd do teasers Scott's way, which is darkening images and having the fandom brighten them up. These tweets from Daco recently surfaced as well. Apparently on September 27, 2020, Daco said, I recently got a response 
response from Scott talking about the possibility of Springtrap coming to Dead by Daylight after emailing him about the topic a while ago. I'll cover it in detail in a later video, but for now I'll just give a general overview of it. Simply put, Scott would be fine with putting Springtrap into the game. The issue is that in the end, it's Dead by Daylight devs choices whether it happens or not. So while he'd allow it, it can only happen if the devs want to do it in the first place. Now this is kind of crazy information that I'd never seen before. There's no record of these tweets on Twitter anymore, meaning they're either deleted or fake. I tweeted at Daco and said, hey Daco, are these tweets real or did someone with a fake account tweet this in 2020? Daco responded fake, meaning these tweets are photoshopped. Some people think it's possible that they're real and deleted to keep this private information on the down low. But this is all the information we have on this. On February 10th, 2022, the owner of the DVD Leaks Discord mass said, ha, found something. Too early to leak though. It's about the anniversary. All of this came after the most recent DVD Leaks post about the two tomes, so it was something else. I got in touch with another data miner to see if there's anything notable in the DVD pack files. There were a couple things. This slasher, aka killer in the files named Crooked. It doesn't really match any of the known codenames for killers in the files. But when we looked at the skin here, it seems like this is an alternate codename for the hillbilly. Another strange thing the data miner found in the pack files was a realm called the zoo. There were three assets found in this file, and these assets don't match anything seen in the in-game realms or in the DVD tutorial. The first theory that emerged is that this realm is a reworked Haddonfield, since the leaked assets of Haddonfield have already surfaced. Also, all the way back in January 2021, Behavior renewed the Halloween license. But these assets more closely resemble the reworked swamps that were rumored to come into DVD. The King posted a theory video about this all the way back in November 2019. The strangest thing about this zoo realm is that there's only three assets, which isn't enough for a new map. And these were the only two strange things found in the pack files, leading people to believe that Mass may have gotten a leak from elsewhere. At the five year anniversary, Behavior laid out a game plan for the next four chapters in DVD, saying at the time the plan was four killers, five survivors, and two maps. And this is exactly what we saw in year six. But wait, if Matthew Cote just started working with the Ringu license holders in September after the anniversary and certainly after Behavior had year six fully planned, what was the original plan for chapter 23? It seems pretty high odds that this mystery chapter was original because we already had the Nemesis and the Cenobite as licensed chapters and everyone knows that Cote said we'd only see two licenses a year maximum. So what changed this? What caused the Ringu to come in as the third license in year six? DBD leaks tease chapter 23, 24, and 25 with these emojis. This led us down some pretty crazy rabbit holes when trying to speculate chapter 23. But look at what Mass said here in November. It's funny how the leaks for the next four chapters could happen anytime now. There's two or three people who already know these next four. This was set on November 3rd, which was two days after the artist leaks. For those who don't know, the artist and Jonah Vasquez were leaked before chapter 22 was announced, as well as the new map. Look here, this map leak happened inside of a Discord call. There were two theories on how that artist leak happened. One, a friend of a developer betrayed the devs and leaked the content. And two, a behavior developer is the one who made this fake Twitter account and spilled all the leaks. A job search for a technical artist in DVD was found shortly after this leak, which led some people in the data mining community to think that this is the dev that somehow betrayed behavior. The point is, future assets and content are not listed in the pack files until the PTB goes live. So these assets must have been accessed directly from behavior's headquarters in Montreal, Canada. There were three people in this Discord call. Two days later, Mass says three or four people know the next four chapters. And then these teases from Mass surface. At this time, the next four chapters would be chapter 21 to 24, meaning someone out there knows the anniversary chapter or they thought they knew. Because look at this, the anniversary chapter was teased with a ghost emoji. But after the Ringu chapter was dropped, Mass said, so there's your ghost emoji, I guess. I don't know the anniversary, I thought it was the ring. So at the time of the artist leak, the anniversary chapter was rumored to be the ring, leading Mass to tease the ghost emojis for that chapter. And even right after the artist leak, Mass teased the anniversary chapter to be also licensed. But instead, the ring came for chapter 23, leading data miners to think that a much, much bigger license was obtained for the anniversary chapter. If all of the FNAF teasers are fake, which we're not even sure, there are still theories out there that the anniversary chapter is a big, big license. And even the spider theories are still alive because Behavior posted another picture with a bug in the background. And the new tome does say one day its spiderlings will spill across the realm. You've been watching a DVD theory video. Make sure to like it and subscribe if you want your feed filled with more videos like this one. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.